Hey, Prophecy here, and today we're going to be doing an incision and drainage on our do it at home abscess. So I'm going to take you step by step through the procedure itself, and we're going to demonstrate it as close to real life as possible on this pig skin, which we created our own abscess. And if you haven't seen that video, I would recommend you watch that video first so you know how we kind of put this together. And then from there, you can watch this video and I'll show you step by step of how to perform an incision and drainage. So stay tuned. As a PA in the emergency department, we see abscesses come through the door probably on a daily basis, if not every other shift. And so it's really important as a PA student or a medical student that we know a step-by-step -step how to do an incision and drainage. And sometimes it's kind of hard to replicate in a laboratory setting because there aren't that many great simulators for abscess drainage. So that's why we made this abscess. And you can watch my other video to see how we did that. And from here, we're gonna show you the steps to take to do the incision and drainage. But before we do that, we need to show you the materials that we'll need to proceed with this procedure. All right, so let's go through some of the things that we're gonna need to perform this incision and drainage. So first of all, we're gonna need our abscess. Um, second of all, we're gonna need uh, some gloves. Now, performing an incision and drainage is generally thought of as a non-sterile procedure. So the gloves that you can get off of the wall in any uh, exam room should be sufficient. Uh, we're also gonna need something to clean the wound with, something to clean the abscess with before we drain, we, uh, drain it. And I grabbed some um, uh, iodine swabs um, we're going to need something to inject anesthesia with. Now, I have to be pretty careful with this because I don't want to explode the water balloon we place in there before we do the actual incision and drainage, but I will try to demonstrate as best as possible how to anesthetize the, the abscess before draining it. Um, I also made some makeshift packing. So I don't have packing um, offhand, but I actually use some web roll. You can also use a piece of gauze and kind of open it up. And if you open it up, you can kind of cut it uh, lengthwise and create some packing that way. You can also use paper towels, pretty much anything uh, that you can create a strip with. So that's what I have here as our packing material. I have what you would find in a general suture kit. So I have some uh, needle drivers. I have uh, some forceps and some scissors. Uh, I also have a 10 cc syringe that I will use to irrigate after we drain. And then I have the scalpel. Now this is um, a 10 blade. Uh, usually in the emergency room, I tend to use an 11 blade because of its pointy edge, uh, but you can use whatever you're comfortable with. I also have here uh, what, what I would think of as kind of my saline solution. And I usually, uh, it's, I don't have a, a cup in the ER, but what I usually do is uh, the four by fours are in a plastic tub. I usually empty out my four by fours and use that plastic tub. Uh, and this is what I will irrigate the wound with uh, after the incision and drainage is done. Now, as you'll also notice, um, after my last video, I went ahead and placed a running stitch uh, where the track was that I cre used to create the abscess. And that is so that the abscess doesn't tend to slide back out of that track that we made when we put the water balloon underneath the skin. So I think that's all we need to get this procedure started and let's get going. All right, so after I've uh, obtained consent from my patient, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, prep myself. So I'm gonna put on some non-sterile gloves. Uh, these are the gloves that I got off the wall in the room. After I put on these non-sterile gloves, I'm gonna make sure that I have all of my equipment ready and accessible. Now, the next thing I would probably do is draw up my lidocaine. Um, depending on where the location of the abscess is, uh, you can use plain lidocaine or lidocaine with epinephrine. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not gonna actually draw up liquid and inject. I'm gonna just kind of show you how I would do that. And that is so that I don't uh, inadvertently burst the uh, water balloon that's in there before we do the actual incision. So I'm gonna set this aside. This is where I would have my lidocaine or my numbing solution. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up my, uh, my cleanser. So we always want to clean the skin before 
we start a procedure, even though the skin is technically sort of dirty and an abscess, we want to clean it anyway. So I have here iodine sticks. You want to make sure that your patient is not allergic uh, before you do this. So I like to start from the center and kind of uh, paint it all the way around. Uh, if I don't have the uh, iodine sticks, what I tend to do is use some gauze and, and squirt some betadine on there and use that. So I'm just cleansing the wound, tend to go from the inside and then travel outward, throw that one away. And then we have three here, so I'm going to use all three. Start from the center, clean around the outside and keep going. Now, these abscesses, when patients present, they're generally really uncomfortable. So. Uh, before I proceed any further after I cleanse the skin, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, numb the area up. And that's going to really help the patient become more comfortable for the rest of the procedure. Now, one thing that I do tell all of my patients is that an abscess is an infection. The skin is infected and there is a pocket of pus under the skin. And because of this, it is really hard to get the wound 100% anesthetized. My goal for this anesthesia is to numb the skin that I'm gonna be cutting, okay? So what I would do is, after I put my lidocaine in here, let's just pretend that I have it in here. Uh, I would, first of all, I try to go kind of around the, the abscess. So I always insert my needle, withdraw a bit, and as I'm moving, I'm injecting, injecting, injecting. Then I kind of turn my needle and go the opposite direction, and I go, uh, withdraw a little bit, inject as I'm pulling out, injecting, injecting, injecting. And then I also try to get a wheel under the skin. Now, remember that an abscess is a pocket of pus. It's liquid underneath the skin. So if we just in insert our needle into that pocket of pus and fill it up, we're really not numbing the skin. So what I like to do is, and I don't want to do it because I don't want to mess up our abscess here. I like to inject my bevel up right in the center here, just into the, the skin and I like to inject a wheel of medication right there. Uh, and then I'll go around and kind of do it in several other spots. And I'll give that medicine a little bit of time to sit in, usually a minute or two, to make sure that the area is numb. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of test it and ask the patient if they're still able to feel um, discomfort or, or a sharp pokey sensation with my needle. All right. So now that I have numbed up the wound, the patient has um, let me know that they are nice and numb, I can proceed with the drainage of the abscess. All right, so we are ready to cut this uh, abscess open. So what I like to do is make sure I have plenty of gauze. Now this is definitely not as much as I would like to have, but I am a little limited on supplies here in, in my home uh, kitchen. So I, I would uh, definitely have uh, plenty of this uh, handy. So we're nice and numb here. Uh, I'm gonna have some gauze in my left hand. I'm gonna open up my blade and I'm going to uh, insert perpendicular to the skin and push all the way down till I feel kind of a pop. So I'm gonna push. And a lot of times you'll see the pus just start flowing out just like I did. I'm gonna draw my knife blade across to create that, um, that incision. And as you can see here, the pus is already starting to come out. So from here, I'm going to wipe a bit, wipe, and I'm going to push from the outside, push that pus out and squeeze and wipe. Okay. I'm going to squeeze some more and you can see my water balloon starting to come out, but I'm going to squeeze from all ends and try to get that pus out. Okay. I'm going to move my water balloon out of the way, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You'll see more pus come out and I'm going to wipe that away. All right. Uh, I'm going to squeeze some more, make sure I don't have any excess pus. You can see there's a little bit more that's coming out there. And once I feel like I've gotten the majority of the pus out, I will then irrigate. So irrigation is going to be the next step. I'm going to make sure that I keep my, my blade out of the way so that I don't hurt myself while I'm doing this next step. Again, I want to make sure I have plenty of gauze. And I'm going to take my 10cc syringe. I'm going to withdraw my saline solution. I'm going to find that opening that I created right here. I'm going to insert the tip of that underneath there. I'm going to cover so it doesn't squirt and I'm going to irrigate. Okay. 
And I'm gonna do this several times until after I squeeze, there's no more pus that's coming out. It might be a little bit of liquid coming out, but no pus. So I'm gonna do that several times, repeat, repeat, until it's nice and clear and clean. And once it's clear and clean, then I know I can move on to the packing stage. Now, not all abscesses require packing, uh, but if it's a pretty decent pocket and there's kind of some, there's a pocket underneath the skin, I like to place packing to help the wound heal from the inside out so that it doesn't just close back up and fill back up with pus. So, like I said, I don't have um, a bottle of packing sitting around here at my at my home, so I created some um, some packing here. Uh, usually the packing is sterile and it comes in a little bottle or jar. What you're gonna wanna do is, I, I tend to use forceps. Um, I also can use um, some needle drivers, really up to you, you can use either one. Um, and what I do before I put the packing in is I will take the blunt tip of my, um, my forceps. Sometimes if there's a little cotton swab, I'll take the cotton swab and I will go inside of my wound and break up any loculations. And sometimes little pus pockets can kind of form uh, little mini pockets. And so what we do th this way is just break up anything there. And I will kind of squeeze a little more. I'll even irrigate a few more times. And then once I've done that, I'm, I'm sure that I have everything broken up and ready to go. Then it's time to put the packing in. So I tend to use uh, like a half inch packing uh, weight uh, width wise. This is a little thicker than that, so it's about an uh, inch, an inch and a half, but that's all I have here. So I like to fold up the tip a bit like this. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll use either my hand or some forceps otherwise to kind of get in here. And I wanna kind of imagine that there is a circle, pocket circle in here. And I wanna kind of go from one side. And I'm just gonna gently grab and push, grab and push. And I'm filling that pocket up with the packing. And I don't want to overstuff it. I don't want to make it too terribly uncomfortable for the patient, but I do want to make sure that I fill up all the little nooks and crannies of that abscess. So I'm going to keep filling it up here. Um, another way to do this, like I mentioned, is to take your needle drivers and do it. And I tend to do this also where you can kind of, you don't have to lock the tip, but kind of grab it and push it in, um, push it in there. And hopefully the patient's still nice and numb during this part because it can be a bit uncomfortable. So just kind of get in there, um, fill in all of the, the area of the abscess. And once I'm satisfied with my packing, um, I will then uh, cut. And I always want to leave a little tail of packing on the outside. I want to cut, but leave a tail. So I'll cut and I'll leave uh, a little bit sticking out so that I know where it is. I don't want to bury it all in there. And then last step, besides cleaning up and making sure you throw away your sharps, is going to be applying a dressing to this. So I usually grab the, the same uh, four by fours that I have, um, and I would apply you know, a dressing here, tape it down um, with some medical tape. And then I always encourage my patients to, when they are changing their dressing, if I don't want them to remove the packing, I will have them kind of peek underneath here and usually the back of this packing with the pus and infection will kind of stick to the back of the gauze. And so what I like to do is have them kind of hold it down and then remove the dressing and then change just the outside of the dressing you know, several times per day. Um, so that is the gist of draining an abscess that was about as real life as it can get here uh, in our home lab or kitchen or wherever you're doing this. And so I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.